tales. Okay, so once upon a time in a land far, far away called LA, there were two nice girls who liked stuff. And they set out to create the perfect girly collection, Juicy Couture, swept the land, and they lived happily ever after. And that's our fairy tale, and that's really how it started. We met each other, we each put in $200, we went out and bought stuff. And uh, we just started a line. Uh, eventually, we, we first started with maternity. And uh, then we eventually, uh, about three years after that, when we learned everything about our business, was man manufacturing, shipping, um, we started Juicy Couture. We were looking for things that we wanted, which is still what we do. You, you kind of have to make what you believe in and want. And want. You can't guess. Um, that's the beginning. That's how we started. The funny thing, we used to go to this picking house and pick vintage Levi's, measure the waist, cut out the stomachs, sew in panels, and design the first vintage maternity jeans. And they were amazing. But, you know, just with that small idea, it turned into a business. And that business was not a successful business like Juicy Couture, and we sold that business for a copy machine. Copy machine that didn't really work that either. Was <laughs> and then, but we learned a business. We learned how to do it. We learned how to invoice, and we learned how to put a collection together, and then we started Juicy. Once a year I get a call from somebody at a university that is an entrepreneur major. I guess that's a major in college, it's none of you are that. But uh, basically what I tell all of them is you have to have a product. It's all about product. Always. You have to know that what it is that you want to sell is something that people want to buy. If you have something to sell that nobody wants to buy, you don't have a business. That's number one. And then the next thing, of course, is learning how to cost, which took us a long time to figure out. We didn't cost the right way in the beginning. And once you know how to cost your product so that you're actually making money, and you have a product that people want to buy, you have a business. And for those of you that are in studio arts or are interested in graphic arts, we have a huge graphic arts department. And um, one of the things that you have to sort of come to understand as a graphic artist in a business is that you can't be so precious or attached to what you're doing because you're going to have to change something because it doesn't pass trademark. You can't use the number 05 because Fubu has that trademark. Somebody might not like the font that you're using because it just doesn't look right, it doesn't fill the space, and you kind of have to learn how to let go a little bit and understand that art within the world of fashion is a business. We like for you to have a chance to tell about your company and where you started, and also some of the steps that got you between college and your company. Oh, okay. What were some of those moments between when you graduated and then when you were in the working world, because that's kind of next steps for everybody. Okay. And then it'd be great if you guys would say, you know, what kind of careers you're interested in going into, and you know, we'll see if there are uh, okay. synergies and things to talk about. Well, I went to the Fashion Institute, and then after the Fashion Institute, I worked for a director, Michael Bay, and some other crazy directors, and I knew that I could not work for someone that I had to have my own business. I just knew, I can't be yelled at. I mean, I just knew the things that worked for me. So, Gila and I, we met, yes. And that we met, that was the maternity, you missed that part, that was the maternity story. We won't mention who, who was being born at that particular time, and some of you know him. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, so, so that's basically how we started. For, for, for me, I went to Carnegie Mellon. I was a fine arts major, I had a BA in acting. And in my acting, by the way, business has always come in handy. Ask Pam. I mean, I can I can pretty much put on any show wherever I go. So that's a that's a handy tool, and it, it makes me very um, unintimidated by corporate board meetings and things that are usually pretty scary to most people. But um, we went into business together, and basically, Aaron, what I said is that to me, it is always about product. You have to have a product that people are interested in. I think for kids getting out of college right now, it's probably pretty daunting because the economy is taking a very bad turn, and most companies are downsizing, but we as a company always have interns every year. We've got interns in New York and in L.A. because we have offices in London, L.A., and uh, New York, and we have everything within our world from design, graphics, uh, production, product development, which is working on fabrics and buttons and J-poles and all, all of that sort of thing. 
rhinestones, um, treatments that go on t-shirts. We have marketing and sales and we have accounting in the fashion business. Retail, which is a completely different world and a different kind of math. Retail math, we still don't understand that. But I have to say, you guys, it wasn't an overnight success. I mean, we've been partners for 20 years, so it took a long time to get from point A to point B. Right. So you have to really figure out and know what you want to do. We knew that we wanted to make affordable luxury, sexy basics, amazing clothes that real women wore. So you have to put, you know, you have to have I hate to say a business plan, but you just have to know what you want to do. A little bit of a funny story. We were filling in for a friend that was in rehab. She she has too much information I have. Okay, so we were filling in for a friend that was in rehab at a store, and Pam had a hat business before I met her called Helen. And she always wore hats, and I didn't have a hat. And they thought we were the same person, one with a hat and one without a hat. We were, that's kind of how we met. We didn't meet each other for a long time because we were both working different days. And then a mutual friend put us together. And we just brainstormed and that started was, a business. Yeah. 50 50. I believe in a partnership. Mm -hmm. I didn't want the pressure alone. I wanted to have the pressure with. It's, it's a lot more fun. Yeah. It really is. I want to have fun. I mean, I didn't want to be at an office till 10 o'clock at night, freaking out every night alone. I wanted to be like, ah! And so that's what we did. <laughs> so one of the things we did that was very different that we do get from the entrepreneurs that call us. I don't, do you have an entrepreneur program here? I get a lot of those calls from people in that, I guess it must be the same class, call an entrepreneur. But um, we didn't, and because we're sort of scaredy cat girls in a way, like when we started our business, it was $200, and that was sort of it in the beginning. We didn't borrow vast amounts of money to start a business, and I would suggest that none of you do that. That's where you kind of, to me, if you are creative, if you if you want to make t-shirts or if you want to make hats or you want to do whatever, start out with something that you can control and that you're comfortable with instead of writing a massive business plan, borrowing $100,000 and seeing if it flies. That was our way. We didn't do that. And I think that that's a better way. That's where I say find out if you have a product that people are interested in before you borrow money to even write a business plan. You know, I, I baby think steps, baby steps. Yeah, we worked for a long baby time steps. before we even paid ourselves. <laughs> and now we're on something else. I mean, yeah. there are there cha you know, it always it changes. changes. We, we do things and then we see one, does it have commercial viability? And two, is it profitable? And then three, do we still are we still inspired by it? And if we're not inspired by it and we all of a sudden are into doing something else, we actually became fashionable all of a sudden. And that Coco Chanel did that with her t-shirt. Where, when women were wearing pleats and V and A, and everything was very long and flowy, over the top and complicated, and you had maids that were dressing you every day. After the war, women were alone; their husbands were gone, and they were dressing themselves and you know cutting down on work. their expenses. They wanted to be comfortable. Yeah, and so you know hemlines changed; everything changed about fashion. She was really a genius at that. And for us, what we did was really exceptional in that way, also because. All of a sudden, women, it was acceptable for women to go out in public dressed like that. I mean, if you look now today's workforce, it's casual Friday almost every day, anywhere. And then we brought that LA style to the world, and that's sort of our contribution to fashion. When we were doing everything, so we were designing, running the business, I mean, you just have to really manage your time well. And then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can't do everything. And then you start hiring people to do those things that you can't do anymore. We have a huge design team right now in all the divisions, but I think what you're asking is a little bit more applicable to Pam, which is Pam paints. If she becomes obsessed with cuffs that are beaded, she goes out to the bead store and buys 5,000 beads and makes 10 pairs oh, of Oh, is that what you're cuffs. asking? Yeah, so she's, she's creative kind of as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah she still like, paints and she still yeah, makes yeah. cuffs. Yeah. and puts feathers in her hats and you know and it is creative in that way in the business side of it it is a business and it's a big design team and you're on a schedule and you have to finish when you have to finish so that's not as freewheeling so we really started out with $200 and we really turned it into a massive empire we have stores all around the world we have stores in Beijing and Shanghai and Guangdong we have stores in Russia we have stores in Dubai and all over Europe we have nine stores in the United States so with $200 and you know a lot of hard work and the passion, one of the things I think that makes us successful is that um, one, we laugh every day, we're still in the same office, 
and we're passionate about what we do. Passionate, passionate. If we hate something, if we really don't love something, we really don't. We don't want to do it. The discipline of it was really helpful in just learning how to put a business together and put a collection together. I mean, you really do have to have that focus and discipline. And I think school taught taught me that a lot. But I think if you really just are passionate about something, just learn about everything and find out what you love. I mean, that is the most important thing. This is the time to just love learning and explore that part of your mind because you are going to be put in a box where you're going to sit at a cubby hole and kind of do the same thing day in and day out, possibly even if you work or do internships somewhere. You, you know, you're going to be doing a specific thing. We are a very, very big company right now. We're not like we used to be. And, our, and what happens as you grow as a company, you become more and more departmentalized. In the beginning, we did everything. We went everywhere together. Now we've got a department that looks for buttons, that looks for zippers, that, you know, it's like so specific. So I think that you're right, and I think now is the time to just kind of <coughs> understand so what demands. turns you on and what you are passionate about and what you love about fashion. You can always get the skills later, and I know from having, we've had kids at our at our office, and we bring in everybody from our office. What, what did you go to school as? Some of them were in the pattern making track, or they're in the merchandising track, or they're in visual, visual merchandising, which is a big part of what we do. So there's plenty of time to specialize. So right now, if you're turned on by art, that's fantastic. And then, you know, later on, I mean, I'm, my acting skills have come in handy, but I was in a very specialized school, but it's not what I ended up doing. We built a massive, our business is huge. We're almost a billion dollar business right now. Neither of us are business majors. I mean, people that are laugh at us, but it's true. I, I mean, mean, there was a time I did not have a computer, even an adding machine. If you were like, what do you mean? An an I mean yeah. My husband's a musician. And he, when my kids were little, you know, I was like, we've got to get them guitar lessons, we've got to get them, you know, drum lessons. He's like, no, if they want to play guitar, believe me, they'll pick up the guitar and play. If they really want to, they'll come to me. And they all play, and they never had a lesson. If you, you, you know, you, you can have all the lessons and not have the passion. They're not guitar players, and they're not musicians. But, you know what I mean? It's like, if it's in you, and you really want to do it, you are going to do it. It's time for something radical and revolutionary. It's time for kids like you to come up with something else like we did and come up with something. Because when you're starting a business, you cannot afford PR. We couldn't afford it. I mean, nobody can. We, well, we didn't even know what it was when we started. <laughs> we had a dad who, who passed away last year, God bless him, but uh, he never took a vacation. He was a workaholic. And I didn't want that. I, I just didn't want that. I wanted, I wanted to have someone that I could share the stress with, and I could laugh with, and have fun. And we talk about fun a lot. I mean, I really, really think fun has to be a big part of your life. Yeah. Or forget. Or it's not it, fun. You know? I mean, if it's not fun, it's just like pure. And if it's not fun, you're not gonna make it. I mean, you won't be inspired. I mean, that's where you could all be friends with each other and help each other out. If you have a T-shirt company and somebody here is in PR and marketing, get together with them and brainstorm. Maybe they can help you. And we really wanted to know what influential buyers had to say about the product. We did sell it. We didn't. And, and that's the business trick. The, giving, the giving away is if if Britney Spears happens to say, oh my god, I love this t-shirt, you give her a t-shirt and you hope she wears it, she gets shot in us, and then they give you credit for it. You have to have all those things for it to work. But to start a business, because business means you're actually selling something, you have to sell it to them. There are boutiques that are competing with the big majors, the Bloomingdale's and the Neiman's, like the and they want those one-of-a-kind, interesting things, and if they're good, you can sell them to editors, and you can say, hey, I want this to be seen by whatever. You guys could do that yourselves. You could meet somebody in marketing, and they can send it to somebody, mm -hmm. but, you know, and you can do it like that, um, but definitely sell it and figure out how to market that right. Don't think that it's like overnight success. We've been doing this for 20 years, you guys. There were many years where we didn't make any money at all. We still had fun, though, honestly. We love, well, those I were mean, the we days. still had a I mean, really they were great. <laughs> we, did, we still they, had a lot of fun. Great. Yeah, they were. We do believe that. We believe we're the American dream. We are very proud of the fact that we started our label was made in the glamorous USA. Fashion is a very new business in this country. Fashion is an old business in France and in Italy, but not here. So we brought LA chic, LA fashion to the world. We started maybe 75 sewing factories in LA. 
so that people like Splendid and Ellen Moss and all these new companies can go in there and start a business because their assembly lines are set up for them. This is the story that people want to hear now. If, if you can start with $200 and you can really have fun doing it, and we still have fun. I mean, we do. look at us. We still have fun every Crazy. second. And then that's what people want to hear. People want to hear it getting out of school. They want to hear it when they get divorced. They want to hear it after they have a baby. Everybody wants to hear, how can it's I? It's the American dream. It's the American I mean, dream. It really is. And believe me, if we can do it, you guys you can all do can it. Do Anybody it. can yeah. do it. Yeah.